today's video, we've got Pat here and myself, and what we're gonna talk about today is ski erg tutorial and tips. We did the rowing video and we got a lot of great feedback on that video, but we also got a lot of requests for showing kind of some tips on the echo bike, the assault bike, and the ski erg. So we figured we would continue down the path of using the concept to ergs and give you guys some tips that hopefully you can apply to your training or just kind of start to play with and work on and see if you notice that maybe it's helping you with your efficiency so we're saving some energy which is ultimately going to help us in our workouts so today pat is going to demo and talk you through this and kind of give you just a little bit of tidbit tidbits to help all right guys so this is a much less frequently used piece of equipment. There's some similarities with a rower or any of the concept to uh, pieces of equipment, but there's some things definitely specific to this since we're obviously pulling like a ski and not sitting like a rower. Um, again, more than anything, I think efficiency always wins um, and kind of trumps everything. Also consistency. So efficiency meaning that we're not wasting any movement and consistency meaning each stroke or pull with our ski handle is the same as the one before it and as similar to the one after it as possible. And that's gonna mean that we are being as efficient with the fan and not ramping it up and ramping it down, ramping it up and ramping it down. So as much as we can keep either that calorie number or that meter stroke number exactly the same, that means that the momentum of the, the flywheel is doing the least amount of work as possible. Uh, the analogy I would give is like, we all know that feeling of like pushing a car out of the snow and breaking momentum is the hardest part. But as soon as you get it going, it's like, go, 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 just keep pushing. And there's a very similar thing that's happening with that wheel. Whatever rate that it is at, you wanna keep it going as close to that as possible because it requires the least amount of work to keep it there. So we're gonna to try to work on some tips and pointers to help you guys be a little bit more efficient and powerful with your stroke. First thing I'm gonna to touch on is the damper for the ski erg. Um, I'm gonna have it on a one today just for the simplicity of me uh, demoing. But when I ski, I think somewhere between a two and a four is probably the most efficient little window that we can be in. And even though that might feel easy, uh, one, it's gonna highlight any of your inconsistencies. So if you have poor habits, it is going to highlight those very quickly. And two, it will create good habits and reward you for efficient movement. Um, and it's also, it's gonna keep a little bit higher stroke rate, uh, a whole lot higher than if we were rowing, probably somewhere even close to double the stroke rate on a rower, so somewhere in the 50-ish strokes per minute range, maybe a little bit below or above or below that, depending on your size and height. But um, somewhere between a two and a four, at least for a while. If you're a bigger athlete, I think you could probably push that up, maybe to a five-ish, but I think that even being a bigger athlete, working on those smaller numbers is gonna make you more efficient if you do push, push up past those four or five numbers. So starting with our actual stroke and something that I see a lot is people that want to kind of squat down. So that means that they stand close and the first thing that they want to do is go down with their arms and their legs like a squat. And that is not a way to create very much leverage. So even though you're getting a little bit of body into it and you're using your body weight, it's not creating leverage and leverage is way more powerful. So what I'm gonna do is for me, my personal position that I like is my feet are gonna be somewhere around like halfway point on where this connects right here. If you're smaller, you may be slightly closer. If you're bigger, you may be a little bit further back, but we definitely don't wanna be right underneath the rower handles. So for me, I'm gonna be right about here. And when I grab the rower handles, I wanna think long arms, which is gonna mean that I'm able to create a long stroke. And the first thing that's gonna happen is my hips are gonna go back. So I am hinging. I'm loading up my body weight, and from my hips going back, my next move is going to be a crunch and a pull with my arms, and my finished position is going to be through my pockets. And the very first thing that I'm gonna do at the bottom of my stroke is I wanna get my chest back up to the top. My arms will follow second, uh, and that does two things. It gives the flywheel a second to catch up with the string, and the second thing that it does, it gives me an opportunity to get up to a position where I can now breathe effectively. I don't want to be taking my breaths with a closed chest. Um, I want to be breathing when I'm nice and open and I can take that breath in the time that it takes for the rower handles to retract. So now talking about where the power is actually generated in our stroke and probably 80% of the power is generated in the top 50% of our pull. In the last 50 probably only generates about 20%. So all of our work is being done from here to here our follow through is just kind of finishing the stroke and continuing what we've done from that first 50%. So I am loading up, my hips come back, I'm putting my body weight into it as well as crunching and now pulling with my arms. 
and my follow through just takes what I've done to continue that fan speed going while I'm retracting and the handles are going back up to the top. So the next thing we're gonna to touch on is bracing. And bracing is kind of the same thing that happens when we initiate our hips and then start to pull. So we wanna be tight, just like anything else we do. If we're gonna max our back squat, we all know to brace and it seems to come naturally. Sometimes with things like this, it doesn't come as intuitive, but it absolutely needs to happen. So what you almost wanna think is like, if somebody was about to punch you in the gut, you intuitively brace for that punch. And that's almost what we're going to be doing right here. So our hips go up, we brace, we get everything tight, and that means all of our weight and leverage then gets transferred into the rower handles, which means we're not wasting energy. And anytime we're on a machine, the key is just utilizing all of our output so that we're not wearing ourselves out without getting some reward on the rower screen for it. All right, so one of the last things to think about, which is important, is the start. So when we are starting, the fan is not moving at all. So we are starting from a dead stop. So that first pull is going to be the hardest pull. So what I like to think about doing is kind of breaking the momentum before I do a long, slow stroke. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly get the fan moving with some shorter strokes and I'm gonna build upon those getting longer and longer. Um, it's a more efficient way to get the fan moving quicker without just a dead stop. I am gonna show you guys what that looks like to build momentum over the course of the starting pulls before we get into our regular consistent stroke. So I'm gonna start with about a third, we'll do a half and then a full. All right, so something else that I see people doing, and I think it's a kind of a two part thing, is I'll see them either coming up on their toes or almost even jumping before they wanna come back down. And it's not wrong to come up on your toes and that can mean that we were taking a nice long stroke and that's totally okay. But I think a lot of times what that's indicative of is somebody's damper actually being too high and them doing what they can to just create some momentum getting that down. And I think that it would probably almost naturally change with a lower damper, but we do wanna think long stroke. And if that means you happen to come up on your toes, that's totally fine. I wanna show you guys what it looks like from start to kind of into a smooth, consistent stroke, the best that I can. And it certainly doesn't mean this is perfect, but it works for me. And I think for at least a beginner's guide, it could hopefully add some value to you guys. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If there's any other machines or things that you'd like to see demos on, let us know, comment below, hit the like, subscribe button, and we'll see you guys next time.